Okay, Okay. Brother Fred? The title of the message today is Authority and Power. It's important for us to know how to use these. You know, God gives us incredible uh, power and authority and uh, the gifts of the Spirit, so many different things that are so unique uh, and and only in the kingdom of God. And and if we don't know how to, what these are and what the difference in them, then it's, we're not going to be as effective in using them, but he has given us power and authority. Amen. So that, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, power and authority. And uh, I want you to know that uh, uh, you have authority to impact the visible realm and the invisible realm. And you have power mm-hmm. to change things, uh, change things that are just incredible power that God has given you. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. These two things. What is the difference between power and authority? And how can we increase in power? And how can we increase in authority? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at Jesus's life. uh, And uh, first of all, I, I want you to see that everything Jesus had came from the Father. It was, there was a source. And so his authority came from the Father. And I want you Mm -hmm. just to read this verse, but I want you to know that everything Jesus had, and he acknowledged this, it came from the Father. Okay, read this verse. In Matthew 11, 27, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son determines to reveal him. Okay, so everything Jesus said, he acknowledges it came from the Father. And when he went into the temple and turned over the tables and, and uh, uh, ran out the money changers, uh, they asked him, Who gave you authority? Who gave you the authority? That was the big question. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they just couldn't figure it out. Where did he get authority? That's right. But he told us, he told you and me Mm -hmm. where his authority uh, comes from, where it came from then, where it comes from today. It's all the same and it comes from from the the Father. Father. And so our authority is also a delegated authority. It's not original with us. It comes from somewhere. It comes from a source. Mm -hmm. And our source, of course, is Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and his source was the Father, but now he has all authority in heaven and earth. We see that in uh, Matthew 28. He said, I have all authority in heaven and earth. So our authority then is a delegated authority. It, it, it abides and dwells in Jesus. And I want you to think about a policeman, and this will give us a real good indication of the difference between authority and power. Uh, And a policeman can go out and stand in the middle of a busy intersection, let's say in the five o'clock traffic, and uh, he can can raise up his hand and and the car stops. Mm -hmm. And then he can wave and uh, the cars move. So why is he able to do that? Well, he does not have the power to stop a car. Uh, he, he could run out there and, and uh, try get, to stop it and, and get on, uh, get in front of a car and try to push it back. He just doesn't have the power, but he does have the authority. And the authority is represented by the badge he has on it. Mm-hmm. And it, it comes from a source. And so all of the law system, uh, everything is behind him, it's delegated to him. He can go out to that intersection and direct traffic. And when he says that a car can go, it can go. And when he says it stops, it has to stop. He has all of that authority and the whole system of the law behind him. And that's a delegated authority. Now, if I went out into that intersection, they would soon be asking me, oh, where did my authority Authority come from? (laughs) I, I couldn't because I don't have the authority to stand out in an intersection and direct traffic. And so, uh, that's, uh, Uh, what the Pharisees were asking Jesus, where did your authority come from? Well, we know that it came from the Father. 
And if we're connected with Jesus, he's going to delegate authority to us. But before I get it, I get to that point, I want to say, let's look at the power. Mm -hmm. What is the power? Well, uh, you know, sometimes let's say you've got a big tree in your backyard that has fallen and uh, you want to get a, you want to push it out of the way. You have a big tree, a fallen tree in your yard. You want to push it out of the way. Well, you don't need authority to do that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you could have a badge and you can call a policeman and, and uh, tell him to come over and move the tree out of your yard. Uh, but he only has authority. He doesn't have the power to do that. But now if you call, uh, let's say a construction company and they send a bulldozer, now that's going to have some power right. and that's going to be able to remove, uh, that, uh, that, uh, dead tree that's in your backyard. It's going to move it out of the way, dig it up, move it out of the way. So that's the difference between authority and power. Uh, authority is a delegated, and so it's the value of that authority depends on what kind of force you have behind it. So as I said, if I got in the intersection, I wouldn't have any force behind me, but that policeman did. He had a force behind him, so he had a an authority with value. So let's let's go to power now. Jesus had not only did he have authority, mm -hmm. but he also had power. So let's look at where his power came from. In Acts 10, 38, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Okay. For so, God was with him. So the power that Jesus had uh, came through the Holy Spirit. Of course, the whole source of all of it came from the Father, but it came through the Spirit. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is the power of God. And so Jesus, when he came up out of that water, out of the Jordan that time when he was baptized in the water, and the heavens were opened up, and, and the Holy Spirit uh, descended upon him in the form of a dove. So they could see it in the form of a dove, and it lit on him. So he had the power. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's like the power like a uh, dynamite, like dynamite yeah. or like a caterpillar or like a big uh, piece of equipment, power. But that's mm -hmm. different than authority. All right, Cherry. Uh, actually, that word there, that word power in the Greek is the is the word dunamis, and that's where we get dynamite from. Okay. And so that's the kind of power uh, that Jesus had. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that uh, that I want us to look at. Uh, Jesus gave some things to his disciples and he gave authority and power. And so let's start first with um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And we see he gave his disciples authority to cast out demons and heal. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's not just healing. You have authority to cast out demons and to heal. So let's read this, Sherry. Okay. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every sickness. Okay. So what I want us to focus on here is that authority removes something and heals. It has those two aspects. It removes mm. and it heals. Mm. Now, uh, Jesus... Um, there was a man that came to him that had a deaf and dumb spirit. That's a, that's a demonic force. Mm -hmm. Okay. It has to be removed. And, and so Ooh, hallelujah. You, you don't remove it with power. You remove, remove it, it with, with authority. authority. Woo! Glory. So, so you remove it. Okay. So he said, uh, come out from of him from uh, you deaf and unclean spirit. You deaf, uh, and unclean spirit, unclean and... Uh, mute okay. spirit, yeah. Oh, yeah, deaf and mute. Okay, that's what it was. Uh, deaf and mute, un and it's unclean spirit. So we have to remove it. Now, you don't remove it with power because mm -hmm. it's a demon. Now, um, we remove the demons with authority, with God's authority. Uh, we don't remove them with a bulldozer. Mm -hmm. We remove them 
with authority and then heal. Now, see, if you, if Jesus had tried to heal that deaf and uh, mute person, is that right? Deaf mm -hmm. and couldn't speak. Okay. Couldn't speak and couldn't Peter. hear. Okay. So if he tried to heal that person, the, 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 the unclean spirit still there. So he had to deal, first of all, with the unclean, unclean spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and you need authority. See, because authority works in the visible realm and the invisible realm. Ooh, it changes things in the invisible realm. And, and the demons don't, they don't, they're not destroyed. They're just taken from one place and relocated mm -hmm. to another place. Mm -hmm. It says that uh, they go out and they go around to the dry places. Uh, you can cast them out and and uh, uh, send them to the dry places. And there's a reason for that because it's not the, their time yet. They're, it's not the time for them to be cast into the lake of fire yet. So that's why they go to another location. Okay, so that's what deliverance is about. The, if a person has an unclean spirit, they need to be delivered from that, and you need authority to deliver that person from the unclean spirit. And so you're just going to remove it from that person and relocate it in the dry places. Uh, so you can say, uh, come out of him and, and mm -hmm. go into the dry places. Oh, hallelujah. Right. So that's what deliverance is. It's, it's removing uh, a demonic uh, force and our uh, demonic being and uh, mm -hmm. relocating it to another place. Right. Uh, and that has to be done before you can heal. Remember the woman in uh, Luke chapter 13 who had uh, was bent over by what? A, A spirit, spirit of, of infirmity. infirmity. So first of all, Jesus had to uh, uh, release her from the hold of the spirit of infirmity. Oh, be oh, loose. So what did he say? He said, be loose. Yeah, woman, be loosed from your spirit of infirmity. Okay, so that's the authority that he had. Now, I want to just th talk about authority for a moment. Uh, where where does it come from? What's well, like a judge. A judge has authority. And he can look at a, uh, a person on trial and get the decision. And he said, uh, you're guilty. And now take this person to jail. Okay, mm -hmm. guilt. Okay, so he doesn't have to scream and yell. Authority doesn't have to scream and yell. A judge, if you ever been in a court, your your court courtroom, room. they don't have to scream and yell. They, they can throw you out. They can bring in the bailiffs and they can throw you out if if you scream and yell. They don't have to scream mm -hmm. and yell. Authority. See, if you have authority, you don't have to scream and yell at the demons. You don't have to say, "Oh, they're deaf and they don't hear me." No. You're not really operating in authority. If you have authority, all you have to do is say it. And he said, mm -hmm. woman, you are loosed from your spirit of infirmity. That's good. And so she stood up. Okay, so that's authority. Uh, it, you don't have to scream. You don't have to yell. You're just simply presenting the fact that you have authority and you're making a decision. What is it? Uh, authority. It is the right or the privilege, privilege to, to act to make a decision Amen. Or, or to act it's the right or the privilege to make a decision you have a choice so a person with authority can make a choice this person is guilty they're going to go to jail if, if we're the judge and we say this person is guilty and they're going to go to jail then there are bailiffs there they carry him that person to jail. Mm -hmm. The decision is made. The The person with authority has made the decision, had, had the right, the privilege to make the decision. Okay. So this is really interesting. Now, when, you, when we look at what Jesus said, if we have authority to remove and to heal, that's Matthew uh, 10 verse one. But now, and when we get to Luke 15 verse seven, we see something about power. No, it's Luke 5, 17. I'm sorry, Luke 5, 17. Okay. It says the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. Okay. So I want to you to see these two differences here. Authority to remove and to heal. Now we're talking about power 
to heal. Mm. Now, the power to heal, that's not the power to remove. Uh, that's mm. just the power to heal. Okay, so if a person, uh, let's say, has cancer, that's a spirit. It's an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have the authority to cast it out. And then it, that organ that was damaged, you have to heal it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but first the evil spirit has to be cast out or removed and then the healing. But now if a person doesn't have uh, an evil spirit, then you don't have to remove anything. You have the power to heal. Okay, and so there may be miracles. You may need a miracle in your life. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any evil spirits, uh, but l let's say uh, one of your organs is not functioning uh, properly. You need a miracle. Just heal, uh, bring that. Or maybe you were born uh, without something. In, and a, a miracle, see, and that's the power. Where does that come from? It's through the spirit. Mm -hmm. The power comes through the spirit. And so the power then can create or regenerate something that has been uh, damaged. Yeah. Uh, and that's power. We need power to regenerate what has been damaged. Authority removes and heals. Power heals Hallelujah. when there's nothing to remove. Oh, glory to God. Let so, me give this example okay. of a miracle. Okay. Uh, the town that we're from, Big Spring, Texas, uh, there was a, uh, a couple uh, that they had both been uh, buried before and they came together and were married. And the woman had had um, all of her reproductive organs uh, removed because of a sickness and our disease. And, um, but this couple wanted to have a child. And so they talked about adopting a child and, but they just, they really felt like God wanted to give them a biological child, but she had no reproductive organs. And, and so they, they prayed and they asked the Lord for a creative miracle that he would restore those parts of her body so that she could conceive uh, a child, uh, you know, the seed for a child. And they believed the Lord. And it was only a few months later that she went to the doctor and they did ultrasound on her. And there were the organs that, that had been removed. And the, the uterus was there. The ovaries were there. Uh, the, the Philippian tubes were there. Everything that was needed to conceive seed uh, was there. And the doctor said that he had never seen anything like that before. And that, that was a creative miracle. And they did. They had not only one child, I think they had two children, biological children. And the, then the Lord gave that creative miracle to them. Okay. See, that that is a miracle. Yes. And anything that the Holy Spirit is doing is coming through the power, whether it's to prophesy uh, or to know uh, a word of knowledge or a word of a wisdom. Uh, that's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, also, the gifts of faith. These are the power gifts, the gift yes, of the faith. faith. And healing and miracles. And, and miracles. Those are all power gifts. They come through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you don't have to remove, uh, uh, let's say, an evil spirit to begin with. But you look at what Jesus did. There were a lot of times he had, had to, to remove, remove an unclean spirit or a spirit of infirmity or a, a deaf and a dumb, deaf and dumb spirit. Yes, amen. Uh, that's what it was, a deaf, deaf and a and dumb, dumb spirit. spirit. He had to remove that deaf and dumb. That's the authority. See, uh, you, you, you're not in a power struggle with an unclean spirit. Did you hear me? Mm. You, you don't get in a power struggle, struggle with an unclean spirit. You take authority over it and remove it or have it relocated. And then 
bring forth the healing. That Hallelujah. is authority. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the reason you don't have to yell. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to carry on a conversation <laughs> with the demon. Well, we yeah, encourage Samuel, people not, uh, to. not to talk with the demons. You don't need to. You've got the authority to remove them. So if there's a demon there, uh, you remove it. Remove it. Oh, hallelujah. And then heal. Remove the whatever the obstacle is and heal. Mm -hmm. That is authority. That is authority. It's not a struggle. It's not a power struggle. Oh, do I have more power than yeah, this? Or does, does this have more power than me? It's not a power mm -hmm. struggle. You just know your authority. Now, and where does, uh, glory to God, where does your authority come from? Well, Luke 10, verse 19. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. Luke 10, verse 19. I'll be on the next page. Is it? Mm -hmm. Behold, I have given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions and authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Okay, so there's two things he's talking about in that verse. He's talking about your authority and the power of demons and devils and the Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, which is greater? Authority is greater than their power. Uh, mm, hallelujah. Their authority is always greater. Your authority in Christ Jesus is always greater than whatever power you're dealing with. And you know why? Why? Because it comes from the Father. Oh, hallelujah. The creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and so you're not in a power struggle with demons, devils, and the, the uh, Satan. Mm -hmm. No, you're mm -hmm. not. You have authority over whatever power they may or may not have. You've got more authority. Hallelujah. 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 You, you need to recognize that and begin to confess. I have authority uh, over all the power of the enemy Amen. and nothing, yeah. nothing and shall by any means, by hurt, any me. means hurt me. Oh, glory Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's look at another example of just power. A woman with the issue of blood, and this is Mark 5. Uh, we're all familiar with the story. Uh, she said uh, she had gone to the doctor. She had an issue of blood. Uh, I believe it was for 12 years, and she'd gone to many physicians, mm -hmm. spent all of her money, and they didn't want, they weren't able to help her. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she heard when she heard about Jesus, see her faith began to arise, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she said, "If I may but touch, touch the hem of, of his garment, garment, I will be made whole. Mm -hmm, I will be mm -hmm. made well." And uh, so she comes into the uh, crowd and presses her way through the crowd. Now, what's really interesting by by law, she's not supposed to be out in the public, but she doesn't care. She just said, "Oh." If I can get to yeah, the, yeah. If I can just get to Jesus. If I can just get to Jesus. If I can touch the hem of his garment. So when she does, what's going to happen? It's the power that's going to come out. So she, in verse 30, Mark 5, verse 30, uh, when she touches the hem of his garment, uh, some power mm -hmm. came out. out of him. We want you to read uh, verses 30 and then 34. And immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself, that power from him had gone out, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? Power went out. Power went yeah, out. Virtue and, went out. And healed her. Power mm -hmm. went out and healed her. Okay, and in verse on. 34, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be cured of your disease. Oh, hallelujah. Be whole. Be, hallelujah. Be well. Go home, be well, and peace, peace to you, daughter. Glory to God. So when when he talked, when he called her daughter, he's talking, he's recognizing a relationship with her and her faith, and so she had faith, and so it was his power, the power that was in him. But he had nothing to do with it. He was just walking along, but she touched the hem of his garment, and power went out of him. But it was her faith that activated his power. His power. So. Your faith, he said, mm. your faith mm. has made you whole. But That's the good. faith, all it did was activate the power. She had to have the power. Oh, glory to God. She had to have the power. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we know that you and I can have the power too. So 
Let's read uh, uh, Acts 1 8. Here. Acts oh, yeah. 1 -8. I love it. I love it. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and as far as the remotest parts of the earth. Hallelujah. 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 So where does our power come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. When Amen. we receive the uh, baptism and infilling of the Holy Spirit, we receive power. Glory to God. Glory to God. But you know, there were some uh, people talk, that Jesus talked about in Matthew 7. I believe it started over on that other page, probably ended up here, verses 21 through 23. And, and what's really interesting, uh, th these people were doing really uh, wonderful things, and uh, they said in, in his name. Uh, but he said, I, I don't even know you. <laughs> oh, let's, let's think about this. Not everyone. This is Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me, oh, on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, we cast out devils. And in your name, we performed many miracles. And then he will say unto them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. Okay. So the point I want to make here is we have to be close to Jesus. Amen. In order to have his authority. A relationship with him. And, and we have to submit to him. Amen. We have to submit to him in in our relationship with him to have authority. So you can be out there doing your own thing and you can be even using the name of Jesus. That's right. There were some uh, seven, seven sons, sons of, of Skiba, Skiba. <laughs> uh, and they tried to use the name of Jesus uh, to cast out an evil spirit. Yeah. He said, a Jesus I know. No, and, and Paul I know. I know but who who are, are you? you? Oh, hallelujah. Who are you? Mm -hmm. You've got to be close enough to Jesus. That's right. That even the devils recognize you're with Jesus. And that's when you have authority. See what Jesus was saying there in Matthew 7? I don't even know you people. <laughs> you, you've been using my name, but I don't even know you. And you you've been prophesying. You've been... Uh, casting out casting devils. Casting out devils. You've been doing miracles, but I don't even know you. You, you. you don't have authority. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, wow. You have no authority. Wow. If you, you don't have a relationship with, mm. with the Lord. You, you've got to uh, be... This talked about his doing the will of the Father. So that's obedience. And, and then there's even something beyond obedience, and that's willing. Ooh, hallelujah. And you've got to be willing and, and obedient. obedient. It's not just good enough to be obedient. See, mm. there's a lot of people uh, that uh, obey when when God tells them to do something, but mm. they, they may, not, may not be happy about it. That, they, they grumble. <laughs> you, you know, uh, the, the, <laughs> the scripture doesn't say, uh, God loves an obedient giver. <laughs> Did you know it doesn't say God loves an obedient giver? What well, says I love a cheerful, cheerful giver. giver? Oh, so that that's more than just obedient. That that's Hallelujah. obedient and cheerful giver. Yes, that, that's willing and obedient. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, you know, let me give this example. When I was growing up, my job uh, in in part of my my chores. Uh, for the family was to carry out the garbage. Well, I hated to carry out the garbage because I had to go into uh, that area of, which we call the alley and that's where the garbage cans were and that's where the snakes were and that's where the rats were and different kinds of varmints, the the horned toads were and and it was scary back there in the alley and so I was obedient because I knew that I would be sent to my room without any TV that night if I didn't carry out the garbage. And so I was obedient, but I definitely was not willing. And so I missed my blessing. 
My, the blessings come when you are willing and obedient. It says you will eat the good of the land. In other words, you That's have Isaiah 1, 119. Yeah, you'll be blessed. You will be blessed. You will eat the good of the land. And obedient. Amen. So that, that, there is a higher level uh, of following the Lord than just obedience. It's being submissive to his will, doing the Father's mm, will. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said about And be that, happy about it. There in uh, Matthew 7. Uh, it's all about doing the Father's will. And you have to have authority and power uh, to do it. So we saw two different kinds of verses. He said, I give you authority to remove and heal. I give you power to heal. Sometimes mm -hmm. we need just authority because there's an evil spirit. We need to remove that evil spirit. And, and they just need heal. deliverance. And it's not about how strong you are, not, not about how much muscles you have. You don't, you don't have to have a big piece of uh, equipment. Uh, it's just the name. You just speak the name. Yeah, you speak the name mm -hmm. of Jesus and with authority because you're close enough to him. You have a relationship with him. He knows you and you know, know him. him. You know what's in his heart and he knows what's in your heart. You're so close to him. That's when you have authority. See, if he never knew you, you have no authority. It's how close mm -hmm. are you to the Lord. If you're close to him, you have authority. And you need that authority to cast out demons and devils and deaf and dumb spirits. Yes, you I need do. authority. You don't need power to do that. But then you can get in a situation where you need to recreate Ooh, uh, something that has been uh, uh, damaged or, or restored or mm. restore you and that's power mm. that's power uh but now we looked at the woman Let's with the it. issue of blood and, and it, it didn't mention any uh, unclean spirit there she just needed power mm -hmm. she just needed power mm -hmm. and then that would recreate uh her organs inside and 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 stop all of the uh, the bleeding, the bleeding that she was having. She needed a recreative miracle. Ooh, she got that recreative miracle by activating with her faith, activating the power, bringing forth the power, getting hold of that power, mm, letting it flow through her body, and she was healed. We need to know what we're dealing with. Need to know if you look at Jesus and how many times he had to cast something out remove something before he healed. There were many, many times he had to do that. He had to cast out the unclean spirit. He had to cast out the spirit of infirmity. He had to cast out the spirit of blindness. He had to cast out mm, the mm. deaf and dumb spirit. Oh, hallelujah. What it, about the man from the, the roof? Are you going to talk about the man from the roof? Okay. Yes, amen. So, uh, and... Okay, back to Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, it says the power was there to heal. Okay, and then uh, the, he was in a building, in a house, and there were so many people there, nobody else could get in. Uh, they had come from all around, uh, the Pharisees and the lawyers. Uh, they all wanted to hear what Jesus said. And, and then uh, uh, it was the power was there to heal everybody. But only one person got healed. Now, isn't that interesting? The power was there to heal them all. But only one got healed. And the one that got healed, he, he was uh, paralyzed and he was on a, uh, a mat. And, and uh, he had four friends and they, they came. The four friends came, brought him there, carrying him. They wanted to present him to Jesus, lay him at the feet of Jesus and have Jesus heal him. Well... Uh, they couldn't get through the door. There was no way to get in the house. So uh, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't stop them. Yeah, stop they went up on the roof. They tore the roof off and they mm -hmm. dropped him down in front of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Now that's faith. Amen. Oh, you, you want to ask what is faith? Well, there it is. There is a picture of, of faith. faith right there. And, and when those four men dropped him, he had to have faith himself. To let yeah, four, them. Men, four men carry him up on a roof, tear off the roof, roof drop, him, drop down. him down. He had to have faith, and they had to have faith. They had to believe that Jesus was going to heal him. Okay, so what happens then when the, when he gets down there? Uh, 
Jesus said, um, your sins, sins are, are forgiven. forgiven. Now, he had to have authority. And, and so the all of the lawyers and the Pharisees around said, who mm -hmm. has authority? See, it's back to the issue of <laughs> who has authority. authority. And uh, other than God, uh, other than that, sounds like blasphemy for somebody <laughs> for, or, or just a man on the earth to say your sins are forgiven. Oh, hallelujah! Uh, but Jesus tied it in, so we've got authority now. He what he did with the authority, he and he forgave his sins. Uh, he he released all of the hindrances. He removed all, this is a type of removal. He removed hindrances Woo! with authority. He saw what the, what needed to be removed. There were some hindrances related to sin that the man knew he had sinned. Well, we've all sinned. Mm -hmm. So we just need to ask for forgiveness for our sins. And we know that God is faithful and he will forgive us and yeah. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's first John one nine. You ought to memorize that one. Yeah. That's a good one to know. Yes, I mean first John one nine. And so first of all, Jesus had to remove something. And he removed the sin consciousness that the man had that the man had. And so he had to deal with that and he dealt with that through authority. And, and they said, Well now who and they're just thinking. The, the, yeah. All these people are not yeah. carnal thinking. They're, they're not actually speaking anything. They're just thinking. But he responds to it, and, and and he says, "To show you, I've got authority." This is in essence what he's saying. To show you, I've got authority to forgive sins. It's the same thing as healing. See, authority you remove and you heal, and, and so the power was there to heal. And so the man uh, probably hadn't uh, walked. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe he's never, paralyzed. maybe yeah. never in his life. So he's paralyzed. So Jesus says, rise up, take up your bed and, and walk. And, and uh, so the man did that. So you've got authority to forgive sins, remove the hindrances and the power, uh, to cause him uh, a regeneration and restoration in his body so that he can heal. So it all worked together there. Sometimes you need power and authority. authority. So he had to have authority to remove the hindrances. Anytime you want to remove something like hindrances, then you need authority to do that. And Jesus had it, and he also had the power. Now, I'm thankful that in uh, Luke, uh, Jesus gave us power, power and, and authority. authority. So you need authority to remove Hallelujah. and heal, but you also sometimes you need that uh, dynamis uh, power, healing power, and, and that's power, and that's going to change things in the visible realm. But the authority, see, that changes both the visible Hallelujah. and Hallelujah. invisible realm, and you can increase in power and in authority. And the way you increase in power is to grow closer to the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, be speaking in tongues, tongues. building yeah. up your faith in the, uh, in your most holy, holy. Uh, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So you can increase in power. That's through your relationship with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, being in filled with the Holy Spirit over and over again. Don't just say, oh, I was filled with the Spirit 30 years ago. Now you that needs to be a continual process. Amen. Amen. Second way, uh, to increase in authority. That's a close relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, all authority he has been given ha unto me. in heaven and earth has been given unto me. So mm. who do we need yeah. to get close to? Now, Woo! how do you get close to Jesus? You look at his word because yes. Jesus Study is the word. word. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Mm, and, and the, the word, word was God. God. And then the word was manifested in flesh. And we know that to be Jesus. Mm. But Jesus has always been the word. He will always be the word. To be close to Jesus, you study the word. You quote mm, the word. You act on the word. 
Ooh, Glory hallelujah. And then the word becomes <coughs> manifested in it's you. In your flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why that's when you walk with authority. That's when you can walk up uh to a person who is demon possessed and command those those demons to leave that individual. Uh that that's the authority uh that that comes through uh studying the word of God and letting it manifest in you hallelujah and uh that's so uh, it's a glorious thing it's a glorious thing okay this is a foundation teaching today. yes it is you need to know this you need to know the difference between power and authority you don't want to walk up to a demon and try to cast out a demon mm -hmm. with power you do that with authority mm -hmm. uh, but to but to cause a, a limb to grow back that when there's no limb there, like an arm or a leg or right. finger, you need the dynamis power of the Holy Spirit 